Good morning, everybody. I hope everybody is doing great this weekend. I'm coming back with the prize report number 28, but I'm going to discuss some interesting data. Uh, I'm going to discuss three specific data points in this. The very first thing is about the upcoming events, which is going to mark the economic landscape for the next many months. And the second is about the price analysis, both on-chain uh, uh, data as well as some of the technical analysis to uh, project where the price might be going in the short to medium term. And the last one is one of the concerns that was brought up by uh, the XMR community about using USDT on centralized exchanges. And uh, that could be a cause of concern. So let us move on to the data. So there are three important dates uh, that might be of interest to everyone, each one of us because it's going to affect invariably our portfolio in a positive or a negative way. So the very first of which happened the previous week is the release of the CPI data, which is the consumer price index data released, where we saw the all index, sorry, the all items index rise by 9.1%, where the largest contributors were an increase in gasoline, shelter and food prices. This is basically an in inflation increase uh, which has marked a new four decade highs so that's something we have not seen such an increase in the last 40 years and the inflation data that was released uh, not only continued to increase in the month of june but the data actually got worse than expected so and that has been a cause of concern and this is not just in the us but it's been worldwide and we have seen uprisings in many many countries right now as we speak including albania and uh, venezuela and all the all the developing countries but however uh, this is happening more towards the south american and the western nations asia has been doing pretty much okay with some issues cropping up in china as we speak however um this is an important concern that's so that's why we're going to have the fed meeting which is going to announce the interest rate hikes on July 27th, which is a really important date to mark guys, because they have proposed an interest rate hike of 75 basis points, going up to 100 basis points. Uh, just for reference, one basis point is equal to 0.01%. So a point, so 75 basis point means a 0.75 increase, percent increase in the interest rate. And this is done to, uh, to counteract or to bring down the inflation numbers, hopefully. Uh, because it curbs the consumer spending and they can go harder on this but that's going to have more consequences so it's a very delicate move and on the very next day it's going to be the US quarter two GDP numbers the gross domestic product and if that is found to be negative without a debate US is officially in a recession and thereby the countries that are dependent on the US economy um, Moving forward, another interesting part was, this is the chart I showed before the US Euro parity, which reached one, funnily 1.0. Uh, and in so what the ECB, the European Central Bank did is they increased the interest rates by 0.5% for the very first time in 11 years, something they never thought they would have the need to do. And uh, this brought back some positive sentiment, but this could be temporary because everything has consequences. Now, moving to the, uh, the charts part, uh, since the last week, we have come back above from the extreme fear to the fear levels, which is a welcoming news, basically. Um, and also, I uh, happen to see that for any bull bear cycle, from the lowest points in a bear cycle to the topmost point in a bull cycle, uh, the, I'm talking about in terms of the fear, lowest fear versus the highest greed, it takes about a maximum of 1.5 years. So if we are here in uh, the lowest point in fear in June, so you can project that until the end of 2024 where we would get a real kind of FOMO. Sorry, the end of 2023 where we can expect a real kind of FOMO. This is just a conjecture uh, based on the past data. Uh, I'm gonna discuss a couple of charts uh, related to the on-chain data. This is the Bitcoin investor tool data from a look into Bitcoin where it shows the uh, the lower bond bound is the two-year moving average 
of Bitcoin. And the red line on the top is the two year moving average multiplied by an index of five. So the regions that you see marked in red are uh, the p places where uh, the price has been overbought and the green is basically the price where the Bitcoin has entered into a bear market. So if you, if you try to uh, understand what is the kind of uh, time period that Bitcoin stays in this particular region, which I would say is the bear region or the accumulation phase, is about uh, here you would see it's about uh, December to December, about one year. And this is about November to May, about six months. So we can expect an average of up to a year in this kind of uh, uh, bear region, basically. We entered this bear region uh, below the two year moving average around April, May. So we can expect us to come back above this uh, sooner than April 2023 or earlier than April 2023. That is something that we have to wait and watch. The next in line is the uh, briefly discussing about the active wallet that have greater than one BTC. And uh, interestingly enough, the number of traders and investors having active addresses in Bitcoin has sharply increased since the February of this year. And this is a welcome news in terms of uh, the adoption cycle. Now I'm going to move on to the uh, technical price action. Uh, this is the chart. I'm going to just uh, uh, display one of the videos that I made uh, 15 days back in the previous uh, price report. And let me come back to that. I do see us going back up because all the RSI is oversold and, you know, um, we need to, um, in all likelihood, I would expect us to touch back 25,000, uh, get back down. And it's going to be in this consolidation, a very boring phase where the demand is neutral. There's not much buying happening at the moment, although selling could happen should the entire stock market go down again. And coming back to the present day, the charts, we see the RSI is getting back up, which is a positive news, but we are still in the oversold territory, guys. Uh, I, I see ourselves ranging between the 20,000 to 30,000 levels for the coming next few weeks. And the, the best case scenario being 30,000 as the major resistance. And there is also 36,000, but I'm not going that far yet. But we have to have a weekly closing above 30,000. But I don't see that happening at the moment. I've been harping about the 20 to 23,000 price levels and getting back above, up above that, which is the 200 week moving average. So I see us flirting and, uh, you know, uh, uh, going around those levels for the coming weeks. And in terms of the XMR USD chart, I have also uh, said that $120 is a very, is, is going to be proving a great support and $180 is going to prove a great resistance ahead. And I'm, I'm eyeing the uh, time period of August 13, where the hard four is going to take place, which is going to bring significant improvements in the Monero's blockchain and currency as a whole. And uh, there could be some positive sentiment around that. And we can rally up above uh, towards $180 in the coming weeks. So I am keeping an eye on that and uh, checking that $120 levels holds very good, irrespective of the market cycle. And the last in line is the XMR USDT volumes on exchanges. And I made some numbers from the centralized exchanges and saw, found that 70% of the volumes is coming from USDT pairing with XMR. And the rest 30% is mostly the BTC and fiat pairs with XMR. So this can be a cause of concern should USDT a tether go uh, in line with Luna and other stable coins that has historically tumbled down. I'm not saying that should happen, but should that were to happen, it's good to keep an eye on this particular trading pair. And this data does not involve the decentralized exchanges that have been coming up. Well, uh, that is all from my side for today. I hope you all have a great weekend and I would see you in the next price report. Bye-bye.